Welcome to Terra Firma. Today more than ever we need solid ground to walk on. Christians everywhere are despairing and discouraged and yet Christ has given us his sure word as a terra firma, a solid ground for our feet. Terra Firma is a podcast for Christians seeking such a foundation for their life. I'm your host, Joel Littlefield, and welcome to today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to Terra Firma. It is a good day. It is raining heavily uh, where I am here at the church office uh, in downtown Bath, Maine. Uh, many of us are actually without power, had the generator uh, plugged in last night, woke up to candlelight, had some good time in the Word, and uh, it's good to be back uh, after a week of uh, celebrating and feasting and Thanksgiving. Hope you guys all had uh, an amazing time, though I know it was uh, probably looking a little bit different for uh, some of you. Um, still, many of you had uh, feasts with family members uh, whether it was just you and one other person, or maybe you by yourself, or maybe you got together still with uh, a load of people, that's between you and the Lord. And uh, I, I pray that it was a time of thanksgiving for sure. But now we're back, and I'm um, going to address another question today. Uh, last week, I had begun addressing uh, a list of questions that came through through a social media post uh, that I'd put out asking um, people, what is a, a pressing question, one that is uh, most pressing that the church is or should be asking today? And uh, loads of questions um, that were all relevant, all of them really good. I could go on forever uh, with probably a good 50 episodes just answering questions. Not sure how long I'll make that go on, but I'm still gonna. I'm definitely gonna answer a few. Today I'm gonna answer this question. And it came comes through verbatim like this way: acceptance. How to keep the world out of the church while inviting the world into the church? Okay. Um, and and in fact, that the question was posed with that first uh, that first word acceptance. Period how to keep the world out of the church while inviting the world into the church. I get the sense that uh, this person is is really asking this question from a standpoint of uh, probably uh, evangelism, letting people into your life, into your world as a believer in Christ, while not being affected by or swayed by the system of the world. Okay, so we're definitely going to address it from that standpoint. But what has probably most often been heard when it comes to this sort of question is is really more along the lines of how do we be in the world but not of the world? And actually that has been phrased um, from, from as long as I can remember as a, as a follower of Christ has been phrased that way, that Christians need to, quote, learn to be in the world but not of the world. So that's that's what we're going to really look at today. And so for that text, I want you guys to look at John chapter 17. And with John chapter 17, here's what we're looking at. Begin in verse 14 and look at this text with me. Verse 14 of John 17 is Jesus's high priestly prayer. He says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. Now, there is so much going on, but the reason this is extremely helpful is because this gives us a viewpoint into Jesus' thoughts when it comes to this very question. What were his desires for his disciples when it came to their relationship as a disciple to the will of God, the word of God, walking in, in truth, being sanctified truth by the truth, and their relationship to the world or with the world. How did Jesus see that? So this is a great text. Now, there's many 
other places that we could go, but this is one that definitely stands out as uh, now you could also go to First John um, speaks of the world and and the the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and not having these things be a a part of our life as professing light bearers, those who are of Christ, and letting no darkness be a part of us. But we're going to look at this one for today. Now, here's the thing that I think makes this incredible. See, Jesus actually makes it very clear that the standing of a follower of Christ is not that they have to make a bunch of attempts to not be of the world. Okay, so that's the first answer to this question. How do you keep the church out of the world? The, excuse me, the world out of the church is the way the question was posed. But I think that it also could be sort of reworded that, um, you know, how do we keep the church from being of the world? Okay, here's what the Bible actually says, is that a follower of Christ, a disciple of Jesus, is actually not of the world. Now, can we uh, stumble? Can we backslide? Can we make bad choices? Absolutely. Every person can. Believers can. Christians can. It, it's something that can happen. But as far as our standing, a true follower of Christ has made that commitment to not be of the world. And it's as plain as Jesus himself says, I am not of the world. He, he himself, he says, I am not of the world. They are not of the world, just as I am. Because that's speaking of our union with Christ. See, Christ came from heaven. He is this heavenly being, the second Adam, the one who came to redeem us from our sin and redeem us back to our, well, the original state of humanity, the the perfected state, the one that is righteous, relating to God, has communion with God. Because Christ is the perfect human, right? He was the perfect human. He did everything right. So in Christ, we are joined to him, reconciled to God. And we, in our position, our standing, we are not of the world. But listen to what he says next. He says, verse 15, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So he's not asking that in his prayer to the to the Father, Jesus speaking, it, it was never his desire that the disciples make an all-out retreat away from the world. See, that's that's improper thinking when it comes to the life of a Christian or a follower of Jesus that we somehow should be retreating from the world. It's, it's just not the case. Now, many do that. But see, if we take the mind of Christ and the mission of Christ, that we see that Christ actually dwelt amongst the most needy of the world, the most broken, the most downtrodden, um, those that the world would have would have put, a, put off as the off-scouring of our society. Jesus ate with them and, and was even accused himself of being a sinner and a tax collector and a wine bibber. And so it, it's okay for the Christian to associate with those that the world would even say, hey, they're, they're unacceptable. See, that's, that's actually fitting for the believer. So it's not that we're to be taken out of the world. That's not the prayer of, of God, of Christ, when he was on this world, and it should not be our effort. So to, to help answer this question, I want to first just say plain and simple, our mission begins from a standpoint of not of this world, and then it moves forward to the next play, right? And so it's not that we are on a mission to be retreating from the world. We are on a mission of otherworldliness. We are from we are citizens of heaven. We are from another place. We are sojourners, having been united to God through Christ. And our mission is a forward motion into the world. Here's where Jesus says this. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate. Listen to what this says. And for their sake, I consecrate them. Oh, excuse me. I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in the truth. So here's where 
there is something inserted into here that I think can be taken to um, too high of a degree. Jesus said, sanctify them in the truth. Sanctification is a process of spiritual growth. It's refinement, but it happens by the word of God. It happens by fellowship with God through Christ, time spent in his word. It's not a process of the believer looking at all of the ways they can separate themselves from the world that is around them. No, it's that Jesus is sending a sanctified people, a people in the process of being refined, not by our own holiness and piety, but as we fellowship with Christ, he transforms us, he sanctifies us, and that sanctified people is sent on mission into the world to bring people that very same word that changed and sanctified us, and that is the message of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, the one who alone was the perfect human, who alone could be the sacrifice for sinners who had sinned against God. And so it's not so much our duty to retreat from the world. It is very, excuse me, very much ours to be going into the world. So again, the question, acceptance, how to keep the world out of the church? How do we keep the world out of church? We be sanctified. See, you can't think of this question as a building. How do you keep the world out of the church? If, if we're thinking of ways to keep people who are maybe evil or sinful or harmful, whatever, however you want to call it, people that aren't like you, that's a horrible mission, plain and simple to keep those people out of our life and out of our buildings. That's, that's ungodly. It's not Christian thinking, okay? At the same time, if your space of meeting and your gathering space is a place for believers, like-minded people who are united around a common goal and a common mission, if you have set that, that, part, that place aside as a place of meeting and gathering to celebrate what Christ has done, then of course that meeting place is gonna look a little different, but that church better be on mission to from that place, probably on Sunday mornings, to go in into the world and be a people that are accepting and inviting and hospitable. See, this isn't a this isn't a bigotry. This isn't bias. This isn't, that's not what this is. This is the, the risen Messiah has given the people that have believed and trusted in him a mission to go into the world with the most incredible news in all the world. And that is that people can be reconciled to God. Sinners who are broken and without hope can be reconciled to God through Jesus, through the forgiveness of sins. So we unapologetically go into the world with this message, with this gospel. But um, we're, not, we're not on a mission. We're not on a mission to keep the world out of the church, but we are on a mission to be the church, to be those called out ones of God who go into the world as Christ went into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. Second part of the question, while inviting the world into the church. Now, again, th this is a theological um, confusion for sure. Um, to, to, now, now, I'm not saying that the person asking the question is theologically confused, but I'm just saying that if, if, you, if, we, just, if we don't verify the meaning of the word church, then this is going to be very difficult. So inviting the world into church. Now, are you just talking about inviting someone to the building that you meet in? We should be doing that, right? There should be believers and uh, people, followers of Christ who are discipling others and sharing their faith in their, in their everyday life that are saying, hey, come and see. Come and see what God is doing. Come and see. Meet our family. Meet these people that have been my family, that have loved me, that all profess the name of Christ. Watch God work in their lives and watch us love each other, um, though we're different from one another. and We've all sinned and we've all erred in various ways. Come and see that. But when it comes to uh, the true definition of the church, it is the people of God and there is no mixing light with darkness. So uh, someone who is, as the Bible calls it, of the world, meaning their, their belief system is not 
yet sanctified in Christ. They have not believed and trusted in Christ. So their thinking is actually against God, opposed to the will of God. That person is simply not of the church. They're not called out of, from God, by God yet. Okay, so how do, we, how do we invite the world into church is more of a issue of evangelism and, and biblical discipleship. That as we go, as we live, as we communicate, as we worship, as we work and play and socialize and, and do all of these things, the, the world is around us. And we become the mouthpieces just as Israel was for the nations. See, God had come to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to send you to a land that I'm not yet going to show you, but you're going to go into that land. And he, had, he, yet, he didn't yet know that, in fact, that they were, he was going to be the, the, na- the, the father of the nation of Israel that would be the mouthpiece, the spectacle to show all of the other nations around them that there is a God that exists in this world that created all things and that all people will be accountable to one day. So it's, it's in that sense that we are in the midst of this world, showing forth the glory of God, inviting people into our lives, and letting people see the light of Christ and the glory of God through our love for one another. So there is a sanctification aspect. How do we keep the world out of the church? It's sanctification. Be, a, be people of the word of God. Let God sanctify you. If something of the world leaks in, and, 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 and meaning a world thinking or deception or something that is not of God, something that maybe the world loves but God hates, whatever that is, then then you let the word of God sanctify you. But you be a people, a person, a man or woman of God, a child of God, a teenager that follows Christ, that that you, you just live your life in such a way that people are invited to see what God is doing and where you have opportunity day in and day out to showcase your faith in Christ and what God does to sanctify us and redeem us and love us unconditionally. So John, John 17, read it. There's so much in here. This is Christ's viewpoint. Jesus answers this very question. How do we be in this world, but not of the world? We are just simply not of this world if we are in Christ, but our mission is to go from there into the world just as Christ did. Hope that answered the question. Hope that's a blessing to you who are listening. And uh, man, see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day. Hey, thank you for listening to Terra Firma today. I hope it was an encouragement to your heart and to your faith in Christ. Listen, before you do anything else, would you go ahead and hit subscribe on iTunes or any platform you're listening on? That way you don't miss any future episodes. And then jump over and give a review on iTunes. That way people can find the show and it also helps encourage me to know how God is using the show in your life. You know, you can contact me with future episode content suggestions at joel at bathnewcity.church. And again, thanks so much for listening.